All right, I'm at my job site. I'm gonna give you guys an update. There's a lot happening here at my remodel. I've gotta make some decisions. The interior decorator's here, Eugenio's here. Eugenio! Wood ah! floor guys are here. We're finally humping and bumping and getting things moving because cabinets come in about two weeks. Once they're done, I want everybody out, painters move in, and then hopefully the homeowners move in real soon. So let's go see what's happening on the inside. You don't have my Brad the Builder hat on. I don't have any more. Oh, what do you do with the hats? I think he sells them. No. If you guys are buying hats from Eugenio, stop that right now because I give him a hat on every now and then, and then he must put them online. So, so money. today, you put what's what? It's money. Dinero. Dinero for me. How many more days till Cinco de Mayo? Huh. Four weeks. Four more weeks. He's keeping track. So, are you taking the week off after Cinco de Mayo or just one day? One day. One day only. All right. You heard it here. All right, Eugenio, you picked this up today for me, right? Yep. yep. So the homeowner has an attic upstairs that they have access to and they want to put down. We've got half inch OSB, right? Plywood, yeah. not that is. And we're going to put that down so that they can have a room for additional storage. So I got to show Eugenio where that's at. He hasn't found it yet. He's been here for 30 minutes. Never found the hole. Never found it. No, because if he thinks it's above this garage, it's above that garage over there. I'm walking everywhere, but I don't find it. You know what? No. Okay, I'm gonna show you. it's a secret spot. So I'm gonna take you, Gino, and you guys upstairs to show you wow. what he needs to do. All right, up here. Why do you have to push so many buttons? Get one light to come on. Again, I'm not real crazy about this. Eugenio, here it is. Have you not found this hole? I don't come here. You didn't come here? No. I said it's on the bedroom on the front of the house. <sighs> okay. Aye, aye, aye. I think you can, is there another light? Will that, will that hold? So we're up here in the attic. It's not a very big door. So we have four by eight sheets that we're gonna have to cut down because it will not fit through this door and then they have to put some plywood over there my concern i want to make sure can support what she's putting on there so i'm going to make sure it's not super heavy boxes if it's just christmas stuff and boxes it should be fine but this is what eugenio's got to work on here today <laughs> you got to cut it down yeah but measure the door oops i'm moving on to the next part of the house drywall dust. I want to make the house feel as nice and clean as possible. It's definitely a dusty mess and that drywall stage is finally over which is grading all the dust. This is something that in a remodel you have to constantly stay up on. One, it just kind of helps the homeowner they feel better about it. So here vacuum cleaners going, we're sanding wood floors and they got a shop vac that's attached to their sander which is keeping the dust down, if not almost eliminating, which is helpful. So here we are cleaning up in the master bath. We've got some tile that has showed up for the floor. And I have to make a phone call because JR Tile Guy says I gotta purchase some more material. So I always make that call, put it on my credit card so that I know it's paid for. I wanna control the cost. Not so much control, but I wanna make sure when I'm paying my subs, that they're paying for the materials. And one way that I know the materials are paid for is that if I pay for them and just pay them the labor. So there's another little tip for you guys. If you're hiring contractors, 
sometimes you write them a check and they take that money and make a car payment versus a payment on the products that you're hoping is going in your job site. So that's why lien waivers are so necessary if you decide to go the route of paying for labor materials to the subs. Sign a lien waiver, that way if that company delivered the product to the job site, which could be your house or your job site, says, hey, your tile guy never paid me for the tile, you can sue him, not me, because he signed a waiver saying that all his bills were paid. Check that out, I'm not your attorney, but that's usually the way it works. Okay, there's still more work to be done here in the shower. I gotta get Jay back here, finish the ceiling and that wall. So we're getting very close. And he also has to finish this floor. We moved the floor drain, it was running this direction. And now we got it running, I don't know, if it's east to west or north or south. Let me show you. I had to come outside, take a little break from all the noise. There's vacuum cleaners going and saws. Once again, I say this a lot. I don't know why people want to live in the homes when there's construction going on. There's a ton of guys here, a lot of activity. Not having people live in the home makes the job go better, faster. Guys like not having homeowners in the house because it feels like there's always somebody looking over their shoulder. So that's just my suggestion. If you can afford to live someplace else, I think you'll be happier. Your wife will probably be happier. Now this is what it kind of looks like, kind of total chaos, but it's organized chaos. Okay. As you can see on the wood floors, there's a lot of prepping that goes on. You just don't come in, take out the carpet, put down the wood floors. There's a lot of sanding. You want things perfectly smooth. They clean everything up. So I'm showing you the process of what's involved. That's why it's important to find the correct installer to make everything nice and smooth. Otherwise, that uneven subfloor will transfer through and you'll have a problem with your LVT, LVP, or wood floor. So little tip. All right, guys, I'm down here. I got Joe coming in with just going to do the wine refrigeration. So we're trying to figure out how much ceiling height we have because we got a couple of these units. This one happens to be, what, 35 inches long and 14 inches wide. But the most important thing is the depth. So we have to stick this up in the ceiling. Yes. Do you think we need two of them, Joe? This one's showing two. Based off the square footage, I'm gonna go back and calculate that. I will be able to determine whether we need two or one okay. for that space. All right. It's because that's all glass and glass, so we lose a lot of yes. R, there's no R value Correct. with the glass. And we have to keep that, I think the temperature is like 55 degrees. Is, yes. So I know outside is where we want to put this the condenser. The condenser. Okay. Yes. So, and that's, can stick on the outside of the house, but this homeowner has a pool in the backyard, so we're trying to keep it looking nice and clean. Correct. So we're gonna put it in with the pool equipment. Yes. Right? Okay. All right, so we'll go look at that and make sure all that works. We did measure the ceiling. I think it's like 19 inches in depth, so we have plenty of depth because we have to be a minimum, of, they say 12 and three quarters, let's just right. write 13 to be safe, right? We um, just have to make sure accessibility. Is there a certain end that you need to get to as you need to figure there that out? There is, and I have to figure that out through the submittals. Okay, so I'll wait to hear from you after you do your conversations with the people on which end gets access, which way we run these things. Do we run them all the way behind this soffit header. or header, right? Or do we run one at the door and one against that wall? So we run them 
north to south or do we go east to west? Right. All right, so I'll, I'll look to you on some of that stuff. Either way, a lot of times people think it's gonna look bad seeing this black thing up in the ceiling. We've done it before. It's just part of the room, so right. it makes sense. You let me know how quick you can get back and then everything's kind of hinging on you to tell me before I can do the framing. Yes. And then we'll get the electrical, right? And uh, get the thing drywall, get it going. Cause you will install this before we drywall. Before, I mean, before. There... we're going to mount these before. Okay. Yes, and then run our line sets down and out. And then you come back with the finish. Correct. Piece. That's right. There's like a, a um, like a sleeve or what do you want to call a ring it? Up. A ring that goes Beauty around. Ring that okay. Goes around so, all right. Okay. Well, let's keep this going. This is what I got to play catch up on. So I got a, a couple of weeks before the cabinets show up, so I'd like to get in and out as fast as possible. The finish stage can come, the mess is what I'm trying to yes. eliminate. All right. That All works. Right, Joe. Thanks, Joe. All right, All right thank man. You. See you later. What's nice about having this pool room is your pool equipment sits out of the way. We have this beautiful backyard and a pool, and a lot of mistakes people make is they have the air conditioning unit, they have the pool equipment, all this noise sitting right by the swimming pool. So this home builder did the right thing Put it underneath, uh, I believe it's a deck, or underneath. So we'll be able to mount the wine cooler because behind that black wall, that's a waterproof wall, we'll be able to punch through and we'll have access to electrical. This will be fairly, I don't wanna say simple because I don't wanna jinx myself, but this makes the most sense to put that refrigeration unit in here and run the ductwork in so they can have a refrigeration, nice and cooling for the wine cellar, and a unit that doesn't sit outside. It's out of the way, hidden, and looks great, and can do its job, and no one will even know it's there. Eugenio had a long shirt on. I was afraid we were going to get a plumber spot there. <laughs> Eugenio, was the Spanish word of the day pasado? Muy pasado. Muy pasado. You guys let me know if you know what that word means. Heavy, that's what you, that's one of about four words I know, Pasado and Cerveza. That's you, Pasado. I'm heavy. Yeah. That's it. No <laughs> half for you. No single to mile days <laughs> off. Oh my God. All right, they got all the material laid out in here. They're gonna start installing. And uh, I'm not sure if they do the step first. I think they do that last. I bet that's the hard stuff, so. We'll show you as we go. going on with all these little blocks so what we're doing is we're furring out the riser to make the tread just a little bit deeper okay to so compensate for the the carpet riser that was there because there's a bull nose yeah we're gonna go in and take a so look so that's at coming I'm, out and yeah. you're putting these in its place yeah we can kind of go in and take a look at what okay we're talking about. let's go show it to people all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fur out the riser so that we can put a wood riser over the front and then our stair nose will cover up the, the face, face edge. Oh, so you don't have to cut this off. We won't cut this, this off. It stays on. We'll leave it on. We'll extend the tread another inch, inch and a quarter. And that'll be that. Perfect. Here. Okay. All right. So I noticed you got all the boards going in, but they're upside down. Yeah. So what we do is we glue assist all of our engineered floor. So we glue it and nail it. So by laying it upside down and kind of backwards, what we can do is we can glue the pieces, flip them over and nail them in. That way we don't have to flip them back over, glue them, 
and then flip. flip how, how many flip. pieces do you put together before you do the flip? We'll glue like three rows at a time, okay. and then we'll flip them over and nail them in. Glue another three rows, flip them over and nail them in, just work our way across the floor. Oh, I gotcha. Nice. All right. So that's, it's, the I, best part about this is you want to clean the floor well so that there's no debris on the floor so you can lay them upside down without compromising the surface of the board. I know, you guys so, did a lot of prep work here. That's, so that's, that's where a lot of guys that's, miss out on, don't that's they? That's right, that's right. So you're the 18. So we right. got Jens here. Appreciate it. Well, as you can see, these guys got after it. It's probably been uh, maybe two and a half, three hours, and they're making great progress. They uh, got the steps in. The little blocks you're seeing are just there to support the nosing. So that step is just a little bigger than what the original carpet one was. And believe me, this looks a lot better than the black carpet that they had in here before. It really opens up and brightens up the room. Let me know what you guys think. Is, the, is real wood. You can see the thickness is much thicker uh, than what an LVT or an LVP, a vinyl plank flooring. So um, this can be sanded at some point, I believe one time, but I wanted you to see what it looks like. It has you know, the tongue and groove, so it fits together nicely. They glue it, nail it, and um, this is going to be a beautiful finish. So it's the perfect product for this price range of home. You know what I find amazing is the homeowner has been storing all the stuff that we've taken out of the house in the garage, putting it on Facebook Marketplace, and has had tremendous success. She sold the fireplace we took out of here. She sold the grant, some of the granite we took out. I think she got $4,000 for some of the granite, and we still have quite a bit still here. And there's light fixtures. I think she sold uh, the granite for 4,000 bucks and that should have been in the dumpster. I need her to help me sell all the stuff I got in my warehouse. I'm probably sitting on a gold mine, don't even know it. I was gonna order a dumpster. Think of the money that I could save. Hey Eugenia, where'd you get that at? Is that yours? Yeah. I got one just like that in my shop. Let's see, how come it says, why does it say architecture on there? <laughs> no. No? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. If you ever want to get me a nice birthday gift that's coming up here in June. Okay. Yeah. All right, see? Yeah. That's good. Get, yeah, that's very good. I didn't know you cleaned up after yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'll see you later. Hasta luego, patron. So it's just a one day on the job site here, bringing you up to speed on the remodel. We're getting as much finishes done as possible, like I said, because we got the painters coming in about three weeks, and they, well, probably about two and a half. I need them to be the last guys out of here. So I still have to get the fireplace done. I'll walk over and show you that. That stone has been ordered. We, in the meantime, believe it or not, we've got the dining room table stored. That thing is Fred Flintstone furniture. It's like made out of rock or stone. I think it's made out of steel, it's super heavy. So that will probably get moved back so I can finish the fireplace. And I have Eugenio here, he cleaned up today. Still got some more dusting to do. The dust just keeps, it just keeps coming. So all the floors, I met with the wine cooling guy. He's getting back to me on some estimates for what we can do on the ceiling. We made selections on all this chimney, the fireplace, that's been done, picking out the color. I'm sure there's a few more things. I'm meeting the tile guys here tomorrow, so there's more tile being added to the bar downstairs. Thanks for watching. I'll keep you guys posted. Today was a little bit of what it's like the day in life on the job site. I hope you guys like it. Please comment, like, subscribe, and comment as much as you can. I love hearing from you. So I hope to see you guys real soon back here on the job site.